Right guys, we have got a situation in here. This battery has been left to discharge and it's swollen. Like, and I'm pretty scared. Right, welcome back guys. So I'm at the old house, um, my old workshop, and I haven't been here for a while, and unfortunately this battery, over in the course of about two weeks, I think, has basically self-discharged. Well, I don't think it's self-discharged, I think I've actually stupidly left something on. So it's actually discharged this battery. Now this is one of the batteries that I built a long time ago. It's not actually, uh, it's not. I didn't really build them. It's four cells basically, four, four lithium ferrite phosphate cells. So that's at least something because lithium ferrite um, phosphate batteries, LIFE, are a little bit kind of safer than the other ones. But even so, there's a massive gas build up on these cells and I'm gonna have to get them out of here quick, my cats. Now, because they are deeply discharged, you know, there's no power in them. So I'm guessing we've just got basically just a gas build up inside these cells. So um, we can actually see if you kind of look around the edges, I think we've got like a little bit of a, I actually thought these were supposed to vent seems like the outer ones have actually pushed out. I don't know, I need to have a closer look at this. Um, you know, you've got these kind of like valves on the top. I thought they were supposed to kind of, you know, kind of let the gas out, but yeah, it's not good. It looks like they're kind of jammed in this metal racking as well. So I'm gonna have to basically, I didn't really want to do this today, but I'm gonna have to kind of strip this down and get all the good bits out and just put these batteries somewhere out of the way of everything. Is out. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. Oh, so there's a lot of stuff in here. Got like a, a sort of switch, a shunt for the um, the screen. If you've seen the video I did before this, go check it out. It's kind of, you know, it's quite in depth about how I kind of put this together. There's an inverter down there as well. So really, I just need to make sure I can just get those batteries off of that, off of here, so I can kind of almost just bring the rest of it back in without the without the batteries in. And I'll dismantle the rest of it later. So I'll start by taking main power leads off. Um, this is only 12 volts, so this is not like kind of crazy power, but yeah, shouldn't do with that really. Disconnect the BMS. That is so swollen. I've just tested the voltage on each of these cells. Each one is about one volt. I can't really kind of show you this while I'm holding the camera, but basically each cell is down to about one volt. So, you know, voltage range for these is is probably going to be down to 2.5 a cell, probably lowest. You shouldn't really do that. And that is the reason. Look at that. Nearly there. My hands are shaking. Well, I love this shit though. Maybe not the best idea doing it next to like an oil tank, but it's alright because the X has actually depleted all the oil. So, so that's at least something. Well, I've unplugged them all. So, should be able to just get them out now. Puffy pillow of a brick. Really tempted to just drill a hole in the side and see what happens. The outer ones seem more puffy, but the centre ones have got a bit of a, you can't really see it, a bit of a pillow. All right, so yeah, the safest place for them is gonna be right at the end of the garden near the fence. No, that'd be right, just there. So if anything happens, I doubt it will, because I haven't really got any energy in, but I'm not really gonna catch anything on fire apart from that. And um, all this fence and that backfield. So it's the remains of the power rack. I'll dismantle all this, I think, at some point. Um, this is a good, good inverter, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, all the other bits and pieces are all fine, of course. This thing was running for a couple of years solidly, so, you know, I've had, actually had some use out of it, and obviously we've got quite a few videos out of it, but I will, um, repurpose all this stuff for something else. Save all these bolts and uh, interconnects. Never know when they might be handy. So yeah, that caught me out. I mean, I don't know. I, I must have just left the power on on it. When I tested it out, I must have just left it on. Um, I think there's a battery protect system in there which can shut the power off. I thought that was supposed to turn it off on low voltage as well. So what, what's happened there? That's really strange. Let me have a look. So this is a jumper here. If you connect that jumper, then it basically just kind of, you know, turns this on. This is a battery protect. And the battery protect, as far as I can remember, it actually, um, you know, cuts off the voltage when it gets to a certain point. So basically my power was coming in, obviously positives in here. It's going around here. 
um, into this, and then this basically controls on and off your power going to the inverter, which is down there. So in theory, this should not have discharged because this was off. There's the jumper, the jumper wasn't in. So when that's connected to that, that will turn on. So what has discharged these batteries? It's down to this, or this has actually finished the job, basically. Here's the theory, here's what I reckon's happened. So about a year ago now, I probably took this power system out of service because I was doing something else with the shed, turned it into a recording studio, um, and moved things around. So it was kind of left at a voltage, like a resting voltage, I think probably around 3.1 a cell, something like that. So there's four cells in here, so you know it would be like 12 volts or something like that. Um, which is kind of fine for a lithium ferrite uh, 4S battery because they operate on a lot lower voltages than LiPo's, which LiPo storage voltage should be about 3.8. Um, so anyway, it was kind of taken out of service and I think when I came back in here after a little while, I wanted to test the battery, test the system out just to make sure it's still okay. Came back and had a look at it and it was all looking fine and I'd actually turned the system back on with that little jumper clip on the um, battery protect. So that was that and I think what I must have done is just left that in and then gone gone off again. And then when I next came back, I remember this, I came back in, I was like, oh, the, back, the, the voltage is a little bit low here, um, but I didn't have a charger connected, so I didn't have any way of charging it up at that point, not easily and quickly. And it was just kind of like a flying visit. So I just turned it off, I shut it all down again and thought, right, well, okay, I'll come back to that and, and see what happens. Now, in the meanwhile, this is what's happened. It's just basically just killed itself. Um, and you know we have a BMS on there, but the BMS is not actually part of the discharge circuit. So we're only charging through the BMS. So that's that was to stop, basically to stop the um, you know anything happening on charge. Um, the reason for that was because that BMS is only like rated to 30 amps, I think. Charge rate, no, discharge up to 100 amps. And I think at one point I was putting more than 100 amps through there. I don't think, really, can you pull 100 amps from that? those tiny little plugs? Don't think so. Um, so I didn't have it connected for discharge, but what I did have was the battery protect on discharge. So that should cut out if there was a short circuit or if there's other things. I need to check the specs on that, um, Victron battery protect, because I think that should have stopped it being discharged really low um, but anyway what I think's happened is is the voltages the overall voltages per cell were very low and I think the batteries just got unstable at that point so I don't think it's the fault of the BMS I don't it, obviously it can't be um, I don't know if it's the fault of the uh, battery protect I think what's happened is it's me just just you know I've left it on and the vo overall voltages have gone down to a point where those cells are probably unhappy and they've started to gas and then internal resistance has probably played a part and they've basically just destroyed themselves and you've ended up with like one volt a cell because it's not zero it's not zero volts a cell anyway I, it's it's a weird one it's a weird one it might be something to do with the the draw the parasitic draw of the bms as well might have played a part you know that's sitting there constantly pulling you know a few milliamps out so maybe that has just pulled the overall thing down um, and of course, the BMS is not actually connected after the, um, the battery protect. So the BMS is always on that battery. So I think we might have our culprit, not you know in one way, but in another way. So yeah, I think we, we've ended up with a situation where they've just, something has just pulled them down a little bit too far. Partly me, partly probably parasitic load on that BMS. So yeah, bit annoying. Um, you know, they did cost me a little bit, those batteries, probably three or four hundred quid, I think. I bought them about four years ago now. But they've served the purpose for YouTube videos, and you know, you guys have seen a lot of videos with those in. So I'm not, you know, I'm not unhappy about it too much. It's my own fault. Um, and I'll probably just, you know, rebuild that with some other sort of system. I've got plenty of batteries around it. Like these, which are turned up from bigbattery.com, I've actually got some Tesla cells. Tesla 5 amp hour cells, there you go, that Model 3 uh, 21700, 5000 milliamp hour, 5 amp hour cells. So these would be interesting. We'd definitely be doing something with those. Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. I had to quickly run and get the camera and film 
that bit because when I saw those batteries I thought ah the guys are going to love this um, it would be interesting to see you know what actually can happen I didn't expect it from a lithium ferrite battery to be honest but it goes to show it goes to show that any battery can do anything so at the end of the day just remember that a battery is basically a chemical reaction that's alive so anything can happen and that's what you've got to bear in mind with this stuff always be really careful never charge unattended um, always watch what's going on double check everything you do when you're setting charges up and just yeah don't take anything to chance always use beer message when charging and um, yeah anyway all that stuff so guys that's it from me i'll catch you in the next one